now that we're done checking the linear relationship using scatterplot and identifying the possible outliers, we will now proceed with the fifth assumption for the simple linear regression, and that is to check the autocorrelation or the independence of each observation using the Durbin Watson statistic. So, the Durbin Watson statistic is a test for autocorrelation in the residuals from statistical model like the regression analysis so the range or the, the range of values for the Durbin Watson statistic is from 0 to 4 the acceptable range is 1.5 to 2.5 so if we got a value that is less than 1.5 meaning there's a positive auto correlation wherein uh, it's like the positive uh, coefficient that we um, we are interpreting when we are using the Pearson R and if it's greater than 2.5 it tells us that the data set um, as observed has a negative auto correlation so auto correlation occurs when the error terms of a regression model are not independent so our aim here is to get a value uh, that is within this acceptable range and going back to our previous example, we see here that uh, the independent is for the number of stories of, for, of buildings and uh, their height, corresponding height. Now we need to determine the values for each of this column. We need the predicted value and uh, we could get the predicted value uh, by getting the regression uh, equation, which we could actually uh, identify using the scatter plot that we use. So going back to our previous step we just need to go back to insert recommended charts and then go to all charts uh, choose this scatter plot okay go to the linear trend line select this one the arrow options and we need to select the more options so that we could have an option to display the equation on the chart so selecting this uh, box will give us now the uh, regression equation okay so as you can see all we need to do is to use this formula to get the predicted value for each of the uh, observed independent uh, variable or value so here the formula is equal sign and then that's uh, 2.8092 times x uh, so x here is served to the actual uh, x values that we have for the data set plus according to the formula or to the equation we have plus 63.442 so we have uh, 63.442 enter we have the first predicted uh, value which is 243 so we just need to wait for the thick cross at the bottom right to drag the values here or rather the formula okay so as you can see here these are the actual values for uh, the dependent variable and these are the predicted values in case um, you're, we're going to use the regression equation so you can see the difference between these two values and this is what we are actually computing uh, when uh, we are looking for the residual or the errors meaning it's the difference between the observed and the predicted a value so to get the residual error all we need to do is to type equal sign uh, 256 minus this uh, 243.23 will give us 12.67 so copy paste the formula and we'll have this uh, following residual errors so we have a negative residual error here because the second column is greater than the first column here and of course to get the formula for the Darwin Watson we're going to need to square the residuals each of these residuals so equal sign select this cell caret symbol 2 for squared enter and then we have this following squares um, I think we need to adjust the decimal values to 2 okay and afterwards we need to get the total of this uh, values and this would be the denominator for the quotient of the Durbin Watson formula later so 
just type equal sign and then sum for summation drag the range select the range enter and we have this uh, total sum for the residual squared now the next is for us to find the numerator in the formula for Durbin Watson and for us to get that uh, we need to use this formula error minus previous previous error so um, we are referring to the errors in uh, between the observed and predicted value here so we pertain to this um, data set okay and we often uh, skip this first cell because the formula says error minus pre previous error so if this is the uh, error for this uh, case then we need to uh, subtract that with uh, the preceding uh, value which is 12.67 so uh, we're going to skip the first cell right away so with that we have equal sign open and close parenthesis because we're going to square it later so uh, select uh, 5.86 minus the preceding value which is 12.67 close parenthesis squared and we have now the uh, error minus previous error squared and all we have to do now is to use the same formula for the remaining cases so all we have to do is drag this um, or copy paste the formula by using the drag option in Excel okay so once we're done doing this we can now use the same formula here so look at uh, wait for the thick cross drag it and to copy the formula so what I did is just uh, I, I just copy pasted the formula for the summation so uh, you can also write sum and then copy the range for this one then enter all right, so we have now the numerator for the formula for because the the formula for Durbin Watson is just the quotient of this cell minus this cell. So Durbin Watson formula is equal to select the error minus previous error quantity uh, squared total, then divide it by the uh, sum of uh, uh, sum of the squares of the errors, which is this one, and enter the values so the Durbin Watson value now is equal to 0 0.90 or 0.90 now how are we going to interpret this value all we have to do is check on the range that we are looking at a while ago so here we have the acceptable range which is 1.5 to 2.5 and uh, unfortunately are the value that we got is less than 1.5 which shows a positive auto correlation but uh, this is expected to the hypothetical hypothetical data set that we, we are using because if uh, a building has um, higher number of stories then definitely its height is also uh, corresponding or relative to the number of stories correct so we are really expecting a positive autocorrelation um, to that kind of data set. Now, we also need to remember that the Durbin Watson statistic is not applicable in certain situations. For instance, when logged dependent variables are included in the explanatory variables, then it is inappropriate to use this kind of tests.